Hello world, it's Erica. By the end of this video, you'll know the significance of, of that greeting. I recently enjoyed my 47th birthday, and to celebrate, I had a 12-hour journey with peyote. And it was a remarkable journey. Um, it was not linear, so there's no way that I can talk about it in a sequential fashion. It was it was episodic, and so throughout those 12 hours, um, lots of things happened. Um, I was shown and, and, and taught a lot of things, and it was kind of like, imagine if you could compress um, business school, art school, monastery, laboratory, jungle. I mean, just so to avoid chaos and confusion, I'm going to extract um, pieces and parts and, and treat them, you know, in a real distilled fashion so that it can be useful and practical. And also so that, um, but, you know, I'll share the experience with you, but um, I'm, I'm really only wanting to share things that I can see where it would immediately be helpful to other people too. So that's really the purpose of, of this video. Um, this is how it's, this is how this episode begins. Uh, I was outside looking up at the sky, the afternoon sky, and there was a shade of blue. And, uh, and then the white cloud formation against it, the way that it appeared to me, um, in a moment, it just activated a memory, a really strong, powerful memory that went back 10 years, almost to the, actually to the month, and I'm not, I doubt it's to the day, but it's to the month. So it was like September or October of, of 2007, um, I was in Peru. And at that time, I, I experienced, that was my first time encountering um, a psychoactive cactus, and that one was um, San Pedro. And so I thought it was interesting that um, here in 2017, my and I hadn't had any cactus and hadn't ingested any any cactus or had it in my life since 2007. So I thought it was interesting that it was like a little bit not self-referential, but kind of like you know, peyote brought my my mind back, my memory back to San Pedro, and it, it, there's it's very significant as to why that is. The shade of blue triggered this um, significant memory. And then when I allowed myself to go to that um, experience of, of Peru and San Pedro, the image of, of, of a picture came to mind. Now, 10 years ago, there were no selfies. So if, there, if you had a picture of yourself, it's because someone took it of you. And that was the case um, here, where there was a picture that was taken of me, and it was it was when I was in the midst of um, very very excellent feeling, <laughs> and um, and in fact, um, just you know quickly the you know the time in Peru it was like a nine or a ten day um, journey, and there were nine ceremonies that we. Um, had this, you know, pro, and on the ninth one, it was it was really significant to me, and so I was I felt like I was being um, filled with love, and I thought that I was going to explode, so I laid down on the ground on my back, and I was aware of the earth beneath me, and the sky above me, and so while on my back, looking up at the sky, that's how I got the, the original memory of, of the memory from yesterday that triggered the blue. It was because when I was laying on my back then, and, um, and I, it, <clears throat> I can only describe it as like being ministered to. It was like terrestrial energy of the earth beneath me, and then like celestial energy of the sky above me, they were ministering to me and and to be honest I, I i had the experience of like being 
seeded. It, it was like there was a seed, like a seed planted. Um, I would call the seed integration. That's what it felt like. It felt like what earth and, and sky were doing, you know, was like um, blending me or blending in me. And so anyway, it's hard to, to put words to it, but the experience was as if a seed had been planted in me and I, uh, the, the response that I felt at that time and ever since was yes, I agreed. I was like, yes, mm -hmm. okay. And, um, and, and so it was, uh, so there was a permanent memory that was made about like the way that the, you know, the sky appeared at that time. And, and okay, so the picture that I, um, that I saw, I was like, um, I'll show it, I'll share it here. Um, that person, when I would see her, it would, um, like years later, it would re-invoke the feelings that I had that day of um, being, you know, in, in this place of just being completely incomplete. And um, and so that was really satisfying and, and uh, you know, soothing, healing, calming. But then the shadow side of, of seeing the picture is that um, it brought me really sometimes either sadness or a wake up call because I was not living the truth of her every day. It's like I would let her out maybe like on vacation or, you know, at some kind of like extreme event, like, you know, a shamanic journey in Peru, you know, but on a day to day basis, I was not living it out. And that was the pain that drew me um, even to seek the medicine to begin with. You know, in, in 2007, it was just a really pretty um, mainstream traditional life, living in Chicago, having a corporate job. Um, and things were, were like, they were good and right enough that I didn't feel um, that I had the right to be, to be dissatisfied or to be, you know, not content with my life. And I felt like I was being ungrateful. Um, and so as hard as I would try to, you know, not be depressed or fatigued or discouraged or so sad, <laughs> Because my, it felt like my life didn't fit, like my life didn't fit me. Um, I, you know, I would, I would continue to try to like adapt, and so eventually that that kind of gave, and it resulted in me, you know, finding um, this. Well, finding Terrence McKenna, and um, and then after feasting um, on, on Terrence for a good while, that's when I was like, now I want to feast on what Terrence feasted on, and so then that's what sent me. Um, you know, looking for plant medicine. So, um, so that picture, you know, it's like there's this, you know, this woman and she's got this bright yellow flower in her clothes and her hair is wild and, you know, these wacky gloves and, 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 and the counter of that is like, you know, who I was like when I returned to Chicago was not her at all. She was wearing boring black gloves, no flowers to be found on her body and, you know, straightened hair and back in, into the, you know, life of um, boxes and stuff. So, so that, was a, that was a disconnect for me and, I, and it was a bit, it was visible. It was like, because I'd had that, you know, that, that San Pedro medicine working in me and just, and just showing the, the disparity and it was like, that just seemed unacceptable. I knew it was like, this is just not reconciled. So, okay, let's fast forward. So now we find we're in 2017, and yes, it has been 10 years that I've been endeavoring to be that woman every day. And so when I, so now, yesterday when I was looking under the sky and I saw that blue and I remembered, you know, Erica, a decade ago, who would only let like this aspect out, um, you know, on some weird special occasions, I, I realized that I was living her every day. 
And so, I mean, by no means, I haven't arrived at anything. The only thing I've arrived at is my beginning. So that's how behind I am. And I'm sharing this particular video because I would love to save you time if possible. I mean, I know that no, nobody's journey, you know, like lessons can't be shortened, but um, I don't know, wisdom can be grasped more quickly. And, and so it, it wouldn't take 10 years. And, and so now in hindsight, I, you know, I understand like it's like, um, so I, I had had this thing happen to me. I had the work of integration to begin in me when that seed was planted. And, uh, and then I went back to my life and I didn't have any um, place to put it. And I didn't have any words to describe it. And I didn't have any community really that was shared with. So I, um, I kept it to myself for the most part. And eventually, I almost pretended it didn't happen, or I acted as if it didn't happen. It was a life-changing, pivotal, seminal event, one of the most meaningful events. But because of you know social conditioning and um, brainwashing, blah blah, I I devalued the experience and just kind of let it be. And so, um, but it didn't. You know, but I, there was there wasn't complete rest or peace in me for a decade, and so yesterday, you know, so yesterday when I had that realization, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm that woman, I'm the woman in the picture every day, and it felt like uh, I, you know, I wept, um, and it felt it felt like a graduation, it felt like a walking across the stage, um, but it was it was much more meaningful to me than any academic achievement that I'd ever done. This um, this work of like, um, you know, seeing and knowing like who that person was, you know, like in that state of mind. And it was like, that was an embodiment of like my, you know, my, well, my, tr my true self. And then, and it's taken a lot of um, like steps and choices, decisions, losses, risks, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to reorganize and rebuild my life so that that aspect, the, the true me, could emerge. So, um, okay, so that's so that's the that's the one thing I wanted to put out there is to say, please, if you have come upon annoying in your life and if you've um you know discovered the truth or had an experience that has you know you know changed uh your understanding of yourself please own it find a way it's so much different now it's 10 years later i mean now there's you know groups and communities all over the place and you know progress has happened progress is happening so it's not the same you know time um, you know, Midwest 2007, but um, whatever your experience might have been, whether it's, you know, entheogenic or otherwise, um, it's just that if, if something, if, if, if a transformation is, is in you that is looking to come out, I want to encourage that you let it out and not waste years hiding or trying to um, you know, cover or cloak, you know, different faces for different places. Like, um, you know, I realized that, it, like, for me, that I did that out of, you know, fear, complete fear, complete conditioning, um, wondering, like, well, what would happen if I were, you know, to build a life according to my heart, which is like, you know, like I say, I, you know, I'm 47 and I, and my life does not look like, um, you know, a typical 47 year old's life would look. And I mean, you know, that, you know, in good ways, but also in bad ways as well. Um, and so, you know, it's like, so we each have, you know, the opportunity to, to find and navigate our path and to determine what's going to be. Oh, did you just see that lightning in the background? Cool. Um, what's going to, you know, we get to determine what will be true and life-giving and, and worthwhile for us. Okay, so now moving into the next thing.
during the journey, um, I was taken on a tour of a house, and it was um, a lovely furnished, lots of rooms, lots of uh, you know things of interest and stuff. And it, and it, and I did understand that it was my house, and that everything that was that I saw was mine, but I didn't yet feel. Um, like familiar with it and also the house that was inside it was an internal house but the point of the tour it was to um, highlight and point out to me um, assets and so you know if it would be the equivalent of like is someone showing you okay this is the safe this is where the diamonds are uh, this is the garage this is where the Porsche is and this is the cellar it's where the paintings and wines are Okay, but it wasn't, they weren't material assets, they were other kinds of assets that um, it is the, the work and the, and the purpose of my life to um, develop those assets into useful things to share um, with others, you know, related to growth and transformation and, um, and to, you know, doing the work of integration um, where the inner life and the outer life can be friends. <laughs> so this next piece speaks exactly to that. And it is, okay, so that was great. You know, I'm showing this house, it's my house, and all these things in there, and it's mine, the assets, yay. And I was also shown these things like uh, ruby traps or mouse traps, and they were set by me and for me. That is crazy. Um, and, and so then I understood, I was shown like the way that they work. So these are self-sabotaging um, contraptions and, uh, and this is how they worked. It was um, like two pedals, uh, like, and, like I mentioned car pedals, gas and brake. And, and there, were, there were like maybe a half dozen of them I saw these sets of these pedals. And so the, the strange thing about them is like that they were all, they were, um, all of them were depressed completely down, like all the way, pressed all the way down. So it's, it would be telling a car to both go as quickly as it can and also to come at a complete dead halt at the same time. You know, which do you want? And when I saw the pedals, I, uh, you know, the, the first thought that I had was like, oh my gosh, what a waste of effort, what a waste of, of energy, because it's like, since the one is canceling the other, there's no movement, it's complete stagnation, and so if the, and so if it's going to be stagnant, you know, may as well, like, lift up, no need to depress and waste that, you know, that energy, and, and so I understood that the gas pedal, it was, you know, it represented um, the joyful work for me to do in the world, um, which is to translate these interior experiences. You know, I mean, 10 years ago when I started listening to Terrence McKenna, um, after I had already gone to graduate school for um, chaplaincy training, I mean, it was like just this incredible preoccupation with interior landscapes and, um, and, and like a tireless interest in wanting to learn ways to be as whole and healthy and happy as possible and then wanting to share that you know I'm, ex I'm excited about these things and I and and it feels really key and and important in in terms of um, you know uh, adding fragrance and loveliness to life <laughs> so um, so I knew it was when I when I the, the first time that I heard Terrence talk you know, it was like, ooh, I, it, I just, I, I understood that there was a similarity there in terms of the exploration of consciousness and of inner life. And then, and, you know, and then the next step is then, is like once that has become whole, then the, the liberating, the liberation of these, of the outer life, which is where, you know, there's quite a bit of work to be done because, because you know, life, of course, is like structured um, to, it's structured against um, our freedom and our flourishing, unfortunately. Um, so, so I knew. So I knew that. So that's when I work in the world is to, you know, interpret um, these 
these inner experiences, you know, make art out of them, um, you know, convert them into you know, useful, helpful things. Okay? So that's the work in the boat, and that was the gas pedal, not the, not the brake pedal, the thing that kept all of these projects in stagnation. It was this, it was the super, super nasty voice, and the inner voice would speak and say things that, that in, in such a way that it would immediately make me want to like do no more gas at all and just like say and so the so the thing so the, you know the chorus has been you know who do you think you are uh, do you really think that you're that interesting or that impressive or influential um, and then the, the big one like if like let's say that I was really you know still trying to press through fear and speak my truth anyway the big one would be that it was this nasty voice would say the n-word and I don't mean nigga the narcissist and and the um, the accusation of that you know coming up and out of me at me it was paralyzing and so I had allowed like that script to keep um, influencing me and so I might like take two steps ahead and like oh I built a website or oh I you know I, t I did this interview or I did this and then the voice would come out and be like yeah 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 you know and so because my work in the world does draw from inner experiences you know that's just source material that's all it is but the, the real juice of it is like in the application for you um, anyway this nasty voice doesn't care about all that. It just wants to shut me up. And so, and it just says, you know, the worst kinds of things in order to do that. So one of the reasons why I've come out the gate like one day after um, after my journey, which is very soon in my opinion, but I'm doing it because just in this one, you know, for this one instance, is to, to apply the learning right away, which is once I, I saw the, the mechanism, how it works, and, and what, you know, what I, uh, kind of like the parts of me that were conflicted and that weren't in agreement with my purpose were hanging back and causing trouble. And so, and, and I can still hear them. I can still hear those, you know, like that kind of, it just, uh, it's like, it's like just residue from a lifetime of having been conditioned to believe in, um, you know, an idea of, smallness or inability or incompetence or blah 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 you name it you know again all by design all by design because um the you know ruling powers um would not have for an empowered enlightened and envisioning um populace so everything has been set up you know to uh, like if, if, if we're fed a traditional diet and if we're raised in traditional ways and we receive traditional schooling, then I guarantee there are all manners of enslavement at work in our minds. And so then we become our own enemy, just like me, setting these booby traps against myself in my own home. You know, what the heck. So, so, so what mescaline in peyote you know, did was to show me that. It was like to show me these, like, uh, they're, I guess they're patterns, like bad negative habits, patterns. I didn't have, I didn't judge it. You know, I just, I saw, I was like, oh, but look at that little mess, little of, you know, and it, and it just repeated, repeated. And then once I saw it, though, the exposure of it, it was like, that is what um, disengages it and renders it, uh, takes away its influential power. So it's like, so I know that it exists. I know that there's this, that there's been a long-standing habit of, um, you know, bad self-talk or, or self-talk that would have me to not lunge into my into my purpose. And, and I'm making the video anyway, and I'm gonna share it anyway. And um, so the purpose of the way that I opened the video, when I said, hello world, it's Erica, it was to say that, um, you know, yesterday I graduated. I graduated from um, that fragmented self. I'm, I'm sure, actually, it wasn't just yesterday. It was like yesterday I realized it that I, you know, had been coming, been coming for a while, and I, you know, in increments, little small, little small baby steps, little micro steps, um, 
tip the bed when I, I just was able to, you know, like compare, you know, like that picture of 10 years ago, you know, to that. I don't mean the, the image, okay? I mean like the energetic signature. Um, it's like, yeah, we are one and the same. And, and so that work, that reconciling work is, is complete. And now I'm, you know, you know so I'm excited because um, from this, you know, place of, of integration, um, now I can start. <laughs> and, um, and so it's going to be my joy to be of service to you in the way that I've agreed to come and serve. I want to encourage you, please, uh, that if you have bodies of work within you, like creative bodies of work. Songs, books, movies, paintings, screenplays, um, you know, theories, I, philosophies, bring them forward. You know, assuming that they're uh, affirming of life, bring them forward. It's needed. It's wanted. You know, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. And that's the point. It's like, I was actually, um, I, another strange conflict was that I was like preoccupied with this idea of becoming whole and, and having um, a harmonious existence within myself, like to not be like this, you know, like fighting myself. Um, and, uh, but it seemed so, like such a, it seemed like such a self-preoccupied, unimportant, trite, sentimental, trivial thing to do. I mean, like, you see all this judgment I had about it. So I couldn't turn away from it because it is, it's pers it persists. Um, but I also didn't speak very proudly of it because it was a little embarrassing, I guess. I didn't know how to, like, own that completely. Um, but I, I want to say that, you know, I now understand that I, I do believe it's you know, like the most important uh, work that can be done because much of um, the goodness and the information and the wisdom that um, is to be shared is shared through like um, a form of you know, like the word that is not wanting to come out is transmission, but it's, it's like it, it, it exudes, let's say that, exudes. I'm trying to make this sound like as, 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 as unalien as possible. So, but it, it will exude itself, you know, the, the teaching. So let's say that someone might say, like, oh, I'm a teacher of transformation or a teacher of, of um, personal liberation, you know, and it's like there's words, there can be books and there can be um lectures but then there's there's that which is exuded or transmitted and so it comes so, so the wisdom of it the learning of it can still come um in between the words and that's that's transmission so um and it happens you know through our beingness it happens through our vesselness and that's why it's like, yeah, becoming learned um, is, is, is admirable, becoming learned, but becoming whole, that's the game changer. So there will be more to say and share along these lines, but I um, wanted to make this first initial Hello World video, and um, both to out my own booby traps and also to invite and encourage those of you that might feel um, fragmented in your life and you are desiring less of that and to feel you know more like you want to feel like the same person all the time. Like that's what I want. I was just like, I just don't want to feel schizophrenic. I don't want to feel like, you know, my work life and my play life and my spiritual life and this and this is like all scattered. It's like, and that's how like, you know, that's how it was laid out. And I was like, no, I want to be me completely all the time, everywhere with everyone. Like that just seemed like such a basic urge. And I'm like, why is that so hard? I mean, I've got like thoughts, ideas about that I'll talk about later. 
but um, I just want to say that like it is possible and it does not have to take a decade by any means <laughs> for you to be aligned with you. So if you've got any questions or, or comments, I certainly welcome them. I don't want this to be, you know, just a one way, you know, me blathering on. I really want to engage with you. Let's compare landscapes, let's compare consciousness, experience. Um, I think that this will be helpful, helpful, helpful for um, any and all others that are, you know, scouting out likewise, okay? Thanks for your attention. More soon.